Well, I bought some plants. Now I have to get them home. Okay, so I went plant shopping when I was in Florida, and honestly, this was kind of my intention. So I did bring down a duffel bag in my suitcase so that I can throw my stuff in a duffel bag, uh, check that on the plane, and bring all these home in my carry-on. By the way, it's totally uh, allowed to bring plants in carry-ons. You might have a problem with something like an agave that could be potentially used as like a weapon, but the TSA is totally fine with you carrying plants on a plane. But it's pretty important to keep them in your carry-on because the temperature in cargo holds can get quite cold and since we're dealing here with definitely tropical plants uh, that's why the carry-on situation is happening but there is a way that I sort of prepare plants for travel that involves both keeping them light and keeping them safe and I'm going to show you how we do that first I'll just show you quickly the plants I have I picked up several bromeliads I really wanted to add some bromeliads and they're expensive to buy online so I thought I'll just buy them here because they're very inexpensive in Florida, relatively speaking. I also bought, uh, this is, I think it's called firecracker plant. This is practically a weed in tropical places. Um, but I saw some of these in some containers at Chanticleer and loved that texture coming out. And so it's been on, I'm sure I could probably find it online somewhere, but again, I'll probably pay a lot more. This was $5. Um, I also, just because I liked it, picked up a blue fern. I just liked it, so that's why. And then uh, my mom picked up a couple plants I'm going to take home for her, too. Uh, this is Duranta. And I think the plan for this is that she's going to use this in containers. So we have two of those. Those are little guys. Those won't be any problem at all. So let me show you how we go about doing this. Okay, we're going to start with this guy. And the first thing I'm going to do is you see all these beautiful fire flower spikes? We don't need those. So I am taking the kitchen shears out of the condo and we are cutting those off. Um, remember, I have to keep these plants alive. These will not go outside in my garden for another, uh, what, three months probably, maybe a little bit less. So um, there's no need. We don't want flowering right now. We are just trying to keep this baby alive. Now I picked these plants up from uh, the nursery I don't know, four days ago or so. And so we've just had them on the porch doing their thing. I have given them a little bit of water, but not a lot, because I don't want soaking wet root balls to have to pack, honestly. This also has the added benefit of making this plant a little bit smaller. Okay, I think most of the flowers are cut out of there. There's a few left in there. I have this box that these plants came in, and that's where we're going to make our big mess today. Okay, next step is to take it out of the pot. Now, you, if you have room, you can certainly transport things in pots. There's nothing wrong with that. But the soil is the heavy part. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to knock off, you know, as much soil as I can manage. This is a pretty tough plant. I do not worry about the how this plant is feeling it'll manage this because I will plant these the second I get home next step is we take some newspaper this will help keep in a, whatever moisture is in that root ball so there is a little bit of moisture on that and this is sort of like do your best butcher impression and just wrap that around at the bottom. And then I like to take another piece and we're gonna wrap the whole plant. So I kind of push all the foliage up. Actually, I should start down here. And everything goes in a plastic bag from the grocery store 
or wherever you can find a plastic bag or something to, um, you know, that also keeps some moisture in, but it also um, keeps it from making a big mess in your suitcase. Okay. Tuck this guy in here like this. Okay, that's the process. Now we have to do it with all the rest of these plants. Okay, next I'm gonna work on some of these bromeliads because this could be a little bit of a challenge. Now the nice thing with these is that I picked out, I have four different kinds here. Um, this one's called El Dorado and I got two of those and both of the ones that I picked have pups over here. So my hope is to divide these so I can get, I was trying to maximize the number of plants I got. This one is called Super Fireball. Um, this one kind of grows in a cluster, so th I will leave those three together. And then I don't know if this one has a name. Guacamole, this one's guacamole. A um, couple of those have pups too. So um, the goal here is to keep these in one piece. And that is, I don't know, a little, a little intimidating. So interesting, the root ball on these is really, really damp. Um, so I'm going to be real careful here. Um, now, a lot of times if you order a bromeliad online, by the way, you know, bromeliads keep water in their cup, which is how you're supposed to water this type. Um, so there is some water in there, which I will dump out right before I put this in newspaper. Um, so bromeliads, you know, don't need this soil, but they do need roots, obviously. And if you buy a bromeliad online, there's a good chance you might actually just get a pup that's been cut off, which is actually a really good way to grow them, um, with zero soil at all. So I don't want to be rough with this, but I do think I'm safe to remove as much of this soil as I can for transportation. By the way, I have no actual experience with bromeliads, so, <laughs> so this could go great or it might not go great. Okay. Okay. Now this is the tricky part with these guys. Cause what I want to do is try to gently fold the leaves up, but not tightly because I don't want anything breaking off. But this is mostly just to make sure I can fit all this in the suitcase. That is about as tight as I'm comfortable pulling that. Which is not super tight, honestly. Okay. Okay, now this is where the magic happens. We need to make this fit into this suitcase. All right, so I am gonna line this with a towel that I definitely brought from home specifically for this purpose. And now it's mostly, now this is the bottom, so I have to keep everything kind of facing upright. And I think I think I'm going to start with sort of heavier plants at the bottom. There will be some sort of gentle, gentle squishing involved in this, to be sure. Actually, there aren't a lot of super heavy ones here. So those are the bromeliads. And so I just have to be conscientious of the fact that their leaves are up here so that we don't give them the the total malachi crunch there. This guy, these guys were kind of heavy. So, 
So the towel here is not just for a little bit of suitcase protection. It's actually more for cold because there is a chance that if my carry-on bag, I'm one of the last people to get on the plane, that if my carry-on bag doesn't fit in the compartment, it might end up down below. So I'm just kind of, it would be real bad if that happened. And then, I'll just, oh, it's no problem. Good. Actually, there's way more room than I thought. We should go buy more plants. Okay, all packed up. I'll see you when we get back to Wisconsin to see how these plants went. Okay, I'm back. Travel was, you know, travel-y. But the important thing is, is that I got the suitcase, the carry-on, into the overhead bin. I had to you know, get a little creative with packing. Cause like I said, I was one of the last people on a Southwest flight, which is never a good thing. Uh, but I got it on and I got it home. So let's see how our plants are looking. Okay, I'm gonna unpack some of these and then I'll show you how they're looking. Okay, here's everything unpacked. For the most part, everything looks really good. On these guys, these Durandas, is that what they're called? Uh, the My mom's stuff. I just crushed the root ball so I should be able to slide those actually if I can find the right size pot. I should probably be able to slide those straight into a pot. I would say the only thing that I noticed is that we've got some sort of twist. The leaves got a little bit twisty on some of the bromeliads. I'm assuming that... Um, I'm assuming that we can take care of that, that they'll just grow out of that, but I don't see any damage. I think everything is looking honestly really good. The only bummer here is that now I have to pot these all up tonight. Um, it would be a shame to like, just because I want to go sit on the couch, it would be a shame to just let them sit after I went through all the trouble to get them here. So um, that's the only bummer is I got to deal with this right now. If you want to bring plants back from a vacation or from a trip, you can, no problem. I mean, this is assuming that you're traveling within the United States. I would guess that the rules to Hawaii are much different. And then remember that you can't bring in any plants that are invasive in a specific state. So just be aware that you can't bring in stuff that's not allowed to be brought into a specific state, whether the TSA knows what's what. Probably not, but just be a good person and do the right thing anyway. But you can do this. It's no problem. Not a single person at any point in the airport said anything to me about this. The only time I've ever been questioned about bringing a plant home in a plane was when I bought a plumeria cutting at the Philadelphia Flower Show many years ago. And they really wanted to know what that was because they weren't sure if that was like a weapon or what. And when we said it was a plant, they did not believe that. So that's it. Anyway, feel free to go on vacation and bring home plants. Just always bring an extra bag so you can check your stuff and bring the plants in the carry-on.